Versailles has a history that dates all the way back to the 1600s, and it's well worth at least one visit to learn a portion of it. Present day, there are tours available inside the palace and plenty of estate to roam outside. For our day trip here, we toured portions of the inside, did a fair bit of walking, and also commissioned an electric golf cart to make our way through the grounds where we would explore the gardens and the Petit Trianon. At the Chateau of Versailles, it isn't difficult to reach back centuries with your imagination, here in the palace, so inseparably linked to Louis XIV. Though Versailles is only about 10 miles outside of Paris, it took about 30 minutes for us to reach it by train. This palace served as the royal family's estate outside of the city, but the estate itself became a bustling city, with its population nearing 60,000 people by the time of the French Revolution. If touring inside the palace, you will have opportunity to see the lavish and luxurious apartments of the royal family, the sitting rooms, bedchambers, and libraries, as well as the historic galleries, hall of mirrors, royal chapel, and several other important halls and rooms, depending on which ticket and tour you purchase. For our time and interest, and by recommendation, we viewed the apartments of Louis XIV's daughters, and then the state apartments, the latter of which proffers multiple salons, chambers, and the most famous of all, the Hall of Mirrors. I will say, even though we were there during shoulder season, the second tour was quite crowded and I began to feel rather claustrophobic as we wound our way through the room shoulder to shoulder with hundreds of others. Thankfully, the Hall of Mirrors helped to disperse the crowd and we were graced with a beautiful view of the gardens and estate outdoors. Having finished the tour of the State Apartments, we decided to take a break from gilded walls and giant paintings and find a place for lunch. Inside of Versailles, there are a couple of options, but they are overly priced and rather touristy. So we traipsed back outside the gates and again, by recommendation, walked to the town nearby where we found a crepe shop. The unconventional route is so much more fun. Back at Versailles, we decided to forego the remaining rooms inside and begin our exploration of the grounds of the palace. First came the Orangery Garden. Here you can find 1,200 different boxes of orange, lemon, pomegranate, and oleander trees from May to October. We would see more of the gardens later on, but for now we decided to make our way to the Petit Trianon. This site was included in our pass for the day, and we enjoyed its quieter and less populated nature, nestled in a botanical garden. Inside, you have opportunity to learn about the guard room, grand staircases, service rooms, chambers, salons, and dining rooms. Our favorite room, not surprisingly, was the kitchen. Outside, there are multiple paths that lead in all different directions. One of them leads out to this stone structure that is surrounded by water, flowers, and all different varieties of trees. Though we didn't have opportunity to visit it, there is also a hamlet at Versailles that Marie Antoinette commissioned to be styled after the ones in England. Beyond the Trianon and leading back to the palace, a main road takes you by an idyllic field with sheep munching on green grass, and the road also turns into a tree-lined avenue. On the way to the Trianon, we had come across a little spot that offered bicycles and golf carts for rent. Because they are rented by the hour, we decided that we would complete our tour of the Trianon and surrounding gardens, and then rent one back at the main palace. Once on board our Royal Electric golf cart, equipped with padded leather seats, a plexiglass windshield, and no seat belts, we promptly started the golf cart course backwards. Though there are strict guidelines that the carts work within, so long as you are on the path, you can happily amble along any direction you choose. There are also blurbs of information intermixed with classical music that emanate out of the speaker system on board, automatically playing based on location. Before the French Revolution, the estate covered an area of 30 square miles. Present day, it only stretches out to be three square miles, and a decent portion of that is taken up by the grounds. The gardens themselves originally took 40 years to complete, and the finished product created an ornate and stunning maze of flowers, shrubberies, and 55 fountains and pools. There is so much to take in, we likely only saw 50% of Versailles, even with the golf cart. The gardens are elaborate, and even the sections that are less symmetrical still offer exotic plants and trees. If visiting here, you have opportunity to learn about Versailles' origins that run all the way back to Louis XIII's humble hunting lodge, all the way to modern day. We definitely recommend visiting here if you have the time to spare while in Paris, and be sure to dedicate adequate time to exploring the outside. It really is quite beautiful. Traffic signs around here. Oh wow, this is gonna be good. Whoa! 